hardship, stemming from nature or harsh climatic conditions, is something more than 40% of Kenya's populations living in the arid and semi-arid areas are accustomed to. The areas are prone to drought. Many of the communities occupying these areas are pastoralists. Their animals are their lifeline. The value they attach to their animals is bigger than any other asset. However, year in, year out, drought, a natural but manageable and predictable cyclical occurrence, has always impacted negatively on their lives and livelihoods. The frequency and seriousness of drought appears to be increasing every other year. Communities' traditional coping mechanisms like seasonal migrations from drought-stricken lands to areas of plenty can no longer hold. Kenya Drought Cycle Management Program, a Dutch postcode lottery funded project through the Catholic Organization for Relief and Development Aid, CordAid, supports interventions that enhance communities' capacities to cope with drought. We believe drought is manageable. A drought is a key hazard and a major concern for most governments in the region and for the communities as well. It's also a major concern for humanitarian agencies. And there also exist practical models like drought cycle management model which can help in the management of drought management initiatives. Through the principle of doing the right thing at the right time and by way of partnerships with local organizations working in eight arid districts in Kenya, CordAid has popularized the drought cycle management approach, DCM, on a pilot basis. CordAid have also partnered with European Commission Humanitarian Aid Department, ECHO, to fund drought emergency and preparedness projects in these districts. Uh, DCM is uh, a strategy and also a model for drought management initiatives. So it's about planning for drought situations prior to its occurring or developing into emergency proportions and during the emergencies itself and post-emergencies during recovery. During periods of severe drought, CordAid has provided emergency aid in form of essential medical supplies, slaughtered animals and distributed the meat to vulnerable households and provided water relief. Initiatives for Kenya Drought Cycle Management Program revolve around prevention, preparedness, mitigation and capacity building with the aim of reducing communities' vulnerability to drought. The Dutch postcode lottery grants in the period of 2005-2007 have enabled CordAid partner organizations plan and implement activities that systematically integrate the DCM model in their respective interventions on water, food security, natural resource management and health sectors in addition to capacity building. Pastoralist Integrated Support Program, PISP, is one such partner organization to CordAid working in the dry Marsabit district of northern Kenya. Nothing much seems to grow here apart from rocks. These are the same rocks PISP uses to harvest water. Together with other water harvesting technologies like storing surface runoff rainwater in underground tanks, PISP has increased water availability and improved its accessibility during the dry seasons. More than 300 households now have water that can last them for eight months. In addition, the tanks serve as storage for water relief during severe droughts and periods of emergency. Emergency periods also require immediate support to the few fuel-driven boreholes. 
Burgabo Emergency Borehole supports 3,500 persons and 50,000 livestock at times of drought. The DCM program funding has enabled PISP meet running and maintenance costs ensuring lives are not lost. This community has been living with drought. Normally they have what they call timeline. So when you go through this timeline, you'll be able to know which year is drought, which year has a lot of rain, which year has uh, an outbreak. So from here now, we can be able to plan adequately and be able to save situations. So we prepare in time so that we intervene and we save life. 200 kilometers away from Burgabo, life goes on. Livestock and humans in this part of Marsabit can now afford to have water all year round. PISP has constructed some 32 sand dams along the riverbed which store water during the rainy season and improved 58 shallow wells, commonly referred to as singing wells. Due to the sand dams, water remains trapped longer in the sand even when the riverbed is dry, leading to higher levels of the pre-existing water table. With the increase in the water table of the whole area with the impact of the sand dam, the recharge of these shallow wells will be enhanced. Sand dam construction is quite simple and economical. A trench is dug downstream from the shallow well location and a rock and cement barrier constructed to create an impermeable barrier. PISP also focuses beyond sand dams. To ensure continuity in school activities, they have constructed below and above the ground water tanks to harvest rainwater. Formerly the children are going to the shallow wells to get the water. But uh, nowadays, because we, after we go to these uh, underground catchments, now the children are not going in the evening to fetch water after classes. They are continuing with their studies. So because of now uh, continuing with their studies, the performance has also improved. The future looks promising. PISP is still focused on exploring other suitable rock catchments locales within the district to establish new water points for the community. Situations at times of drought are not anything better to the communities living in Mandera district. Since 1999, the district has experienced seven successive droughts. Abdiya lost all her livestock in the 2006 drought. Life has been difficult for this mother of seven. Rural Agency for Community Development Assistance, Rasida, another partner of Cordaids, works in the district with the aim of turning the tide against drought. Nimipata faida, engine, machine na mbusi bamoja ni royango sio kama zamani. Nabata masua, aweta kubata ration, awezi tafuta malingine, si jalala na anjaka mayashamba yango hiko, na inirejea mzuri. Through an emergency drought response and mitigation initiative funded from the Dutch Postcode Lottery Grant, Rasida has cushioned vulnerable populations against the effects of drought. They promote dry land crop production, dairy goat farming and water provision. <laughs> In 
vulnerable households, specifically those living along River Dawa, along the borders of Kenya and Ethiopia, have benefited from these initiatives. Their diesel-driven water pumps are literally working miracles, a testimony on how greatly many more pumps would contribute positively to the lives of this new generation of farmers. On the other hand, majority of the goats are on gestation, others are already in calf. Further, interior water is a scarce commodity. At times of drought, the situation gets worse, with women trekking long distances in search of water. To enable easy access and ensure water availability during the dry season, Rasida has supported construction of underground water structures locally known as berkads. <laughs> Barricades, a borrowed technology from the neighboring country Somalia, tap surface runoff to fill the tank during the rainy season. Their construction is a shared responsibility between Rasida and the locals. <laughs> The tanks are well built and covered to minimize contamination and reduce evaporation from direct sunlight. Water scarcity is gradually becoming history. Developmental meetings are now concentrated around the water points and as long as there is water, all will be well to this community. All Cordaid partners have undergone training on facilitation of community-managed disaster risk reduction initiatives. The same is done with respective communities for the purpose of programming. One of the things we are trying to do is to develop the capacity of these communities to replicate some of the work we are doing with them, not just to rely on our hands or maybe for an external funding to be there all the time. We're just trying to facilitate the process slowly and I think 10 years to come hopefully the whole thing the communities will take up the initiative themselves. Besides earth water pans have for long provided water to the community members but seepage menace has always been a big challenge. We, we did an analysis and found out that almost 70 percent of the water just is seeped into the ground and to reduce that and to make water stay longer in this pan we actually tried to look for this high-density polythene sheets, which is a, it has a density of almost one millimeter, and it's a big, it's actually, it can stay for a longer period, 20 to 25 years. And this reduces, you know, seepage by 100%. And once you reduce seepage by 100% in those parts, then you can even have water to all of the months in the year. Since Rasida's innovativeness of lining the pan, the locals have a big relief water is available closer to the households. Distance covered by women has reduced considerably from 40 to less than 2 kilometers. Women now have time to engage in income generating activities. Rasida's interventions are a big success so far. Her focus still remains on course and especially on how to make the water more clean and safe for consumption. These women of the semi-arid Samburu district are proud of their culture. However, memories of the 2006 devastating drought are still fresh in their minds. They struggled to fend for their families. As a way of addressing the challenge, they now keep camels, a mitigation intervention idealized and facilitated by Community Organization for Development Support, CODES, with funding from Cordaid and ECHO. Keeping camels is proving to be an excellent drought coping mechanism since the milk yield is high and constant all year round. In exchange of a camel heifer, 
a household gave out 35 heads of small stock, sheep and goats. Codes use them for a restocking process. It happens when a drought has come and uh, some households have lost many livestock or all livestock and they need to continue in their life of being pastoralists because that is the mode of living here, that is the livelihood system here. So they need some stock. So when you give these people some access to livestock and when you actually give them livestock, that is what we call restocking because you have restocked them. Many vulnerable households who had lost all their livestock at the height of the 2006 drought have benefited from this dual initiative. Nabul Kush, a single mother of six children, is one of them. She got a herd of 10 from Codes, and now she prides in a herd of over 40, just in a period under two years. Codes also promote another very important initiative in drought preparedness, destocking. What is done in destocking is to try and reduce the number of livestock that would starve to death uh, due to drought. So that process usually entails purchasing those livestock so that this household is enabled to get some funds to buy food and also to keep it until at a good time when they can buy livestock for themselves. So in that, you afford the losses that, they, uh, that could occur. Water and pasture are also critical resources for the Samburu pastoralists' livelihood. Besides facilitating acquisition of load animals, donkeys, codes working through the community have desilted and expanded earth water pans capacity. Distances to water points have reduced from 15 kilometers to less than 3 kilometers. Codes has also rehabilitated boreholes, which are also key in addressing water problems at times of drought. The core to effective drought preparedness and mitigation is community participation. The community people, when they come together to sit down and think about their needs, it is them who know it best. It is eventually these people who are going to be managers of their projects that are done, and it is them that will continue to see that they continue to get the benefits for a long period of time. Code's interventions have proved to be the right thing at the right time. Her initiatives to the Samburus through Cordaid and Echo are rays of hope and the people's future promises to be better than before. Down at the South Rift in the hilly Loiter division of Narok district, the future promises to be bright. The Maasai Morans have literally put down their spears in preference to another serious mission, raiding the earth for food security, a concept promoted by Ilikerin Loiter Integrated Development Program, Ilidip, another partner to Cordaid. Growing maize is a new lease of life for this conservative and predominantly pastoralist community. The benefits are diversified. Pale mbele ni kabla tulikuwa tunalima tulikuwa na njia mingi sana. Na sasa hivi tumeanza kushiba watu wameshiba chakula. Eh watoto wanaweza kwenda shule, tunafaa nguo nzuri kila kitu tumepata. 60% of the Loiter Maasai are a community acknowledged in the process of attaining their own food security when and where the weather permits. For a very long time, the Maasai relied on the cow. And after dialoguing with them, we thought it was time that the cow gets a core wife. And we defined the core wife to the cow as growing crops. We've used the concept of raiding cattle and applied that to raiding the earth. And within a very short time, the local households were able to produce enough grains, beans, and other subsistence crops to supplement their pastoral diet.
All surplus produce at times of plenty is well preserved for use during the time of drought. Ilidip has constructed three communal cereal banks with funding from Cordaid under the Kenya Drought Cycle Management Program. Her long-term plan is to ensure everyone is engaged in maize production. Poor households have been helped with plows, seed stock and oxen. The strengths of Ilidip are drawn from the well-organized and recognized local traditional development structures, pastoralist community development associations, PCDAs, which have been there since time immemorial. Ilidip's role remains that of facilitation, linkage and networking with the PCDAs carrying the full implementation. Everything in Loita is communal. They are endowed with several natural springs which they communally own and manage. In the past, the springs were open and contaminated. Droughts caused the spring's water volume to recede. Ilidip sought to correct the situation by protecting them. <laughs> Besides, Ilidip has also piloted an innovative water harvesting initiative that harvests runoff water and preserves it in underground reservoirs. Other strategic water points have been rehabilitated or reconstructed. Enko Seremai Borhul is an oasis for some 123 households and their livestock at times of drought. It is a fallback water point accessible when all other sources of water dry up. <laughs> At every communal water point, Ilidip has put up sanitation facilities for the herdsmen. The potentials of the Loita Maasai community are limitless. Traditionally, milk belongs to the women. During the wet season, milk is in plenty. At times of drought, it becomes scarce. <laughs> The Borana people of Meriti in the dry Isiolo district are also challenged by drought. Meriti Youth for Local Resources Empowerment has taken up the challenge and are committed to minimize the impact of drought. Working under Meriti Integrated Development Program, MIDP, the youth are engaged in fish farming. The Drought Mitigation Initiative has not only provided an alternative diet to the locals, but has created direct employment and income to over 20 youths and their families. Katika samaki inaja kwa wasonyiro. Alafu tukaona hii kitu ni chakula. Tena ukiuza unapata pesa. Ya pili unapata treni. Mungu akitusaidia tunaendelea hii kitu hii pali ikue capsite tourist area. One of the strong points in the DCM approach is the cooperation with the local government and other agencies in the region, and MIDP has built on this. 
The unique initiative implemented with DCM funding through Cordaid has attracted the attention of other development organizations. For instance, Arid Land Resource Management Project, a Kenyan government agency responsible for drought management in all arid lands. Currently, they are facilitating replication of the initiative by constructing five other ponds for the group. The impact of the trickle-down effect of the programs are now being seen by the community. In terms of youth, this youth, the arid lands are now showing their big interest. And the issue of community now trying to have interest of uh, selling, buying and selling, and even eating, so that from the drought point of view, they are not only uh, they will not see why the under five, like 13 mothers, pregnant mother are, and when well, we have a lot of resources here. As the fish are growing, the youth keep themselves busy in their small vegetable farm. The group's initiatives have motivated many. Other youths are also trying their hand at business ventures. The youth are not the only enterprising group in Meriti. Women are at it too. MIDP empowers women by supporting their local initiatives like this one of bread baking by the Waldagena Self-Help Group. Residents of Meriti can now afford to have fresh bread in their diet, baked and supplied by their own. <laughs> Through these local initiatives by the people and for the people of Meriti, chronic food insecurity amongst the Borana is gradually becoming a thing of the past and for sure their future appears bright. Search for water and pasture takes precedence in a pastoralist life at the expense of other considerations like access to health services. In Lodwa, expectant mothers and children suffer most since each migration translates to moving away from health services. We have children out in the nomadic pastoralists who have stayed since their life uh, they were born up to 11 years without getting any immunization. If we don't visit them, that means they will stay like that without visiting any health facilities because their first priority is the livestock and not that medicine and not that vaccine. The health concerns of nomadic pastoralists are at the heart of the Catholic Diocese of Lodwa. Infrastructure is virtually non-existent. Accessibility to the settlement areas remains a big challenge, especially at times of rains. Nevertheless, the diocese literally continues to take health services to them wherever they are on a monthly basis through mobile clinics. Cordaid and other partners in valuable support in terms of medical supplies and staff remuneration have ensured that the Turkana community has access to health services. The outreach visits entail health education and other various health services. Expectant mothers also benefit from prevention of mother-to-child transmission of HIV services. But a big challenge is gradually complicating further this marginalized health situation. HIV and TB cases are on the rise, with HIV prevalence and infection rate reported at 13%. Denial and stigma are rife, with the service providers rating it at 95%. To effectively address the situation, the diocese has opted for community-based TB and HIV management approach. Home-based care is essential in, to us in that it's the foundation or it's the basic to cut off some costs for admissions and uh, you know for somebody having been too much sick because the use of locally available resources. Home-based care has helped ease congestion at the only diocese referral hospital, Kakuma Mission Hospital, 95 kilometers away from Lodwa town.
Addressing the HIV situation is a shared responsibility by both the laity and the religious. Sister Jacinta reaches out to a section of the possible 17,000 persons living with HIV AIDS, giving them psychosocial and spiritual support. <laughs> Na hata nguvu yangu yote nilipata kwa ali yake kwa vile nilienda msaidizi kwake Adherence to drugs or even their intake becomes a challenge to them at times of drought since they lack food As such sister through Cordaid and other well wishers purchases food supplements which she distributes to them once every month Yane HIV as well as gender issues are important in the planning and implementation of drought mitigation and preparedness programs. Since the establishment of the policy, there has been a focused way of designing involving uh, all, both gender to have concerns of both men and women uh, uh, taken into uh, the program design and implementation. At the same time, be able to reduce vulnerability of both men and women in as far as a, a drought is concerned. The Catholic Diocese of Ngong, a long-term partner to Cordaid, have since developed a gender and HIV policy. This HIV AIDS policy has really helped to integrate and harmonize the various interventions on HIV. We can see a lot of confidence among our program implementers in the field, in the parishes, and guided by the guidelines of the policy document, we are able to know really and make priority, priority areas on, on what we want to do. Through teamwork, they carried out a gender audit with expertise support from Cordaid's capacity building partner, International Institute of Rural Reconstruction. The impact of the policy is beyond drought interventions. Experiences from the implementation of the policy have seen the diocese also develop other policy documents. Cordaid finds inspiration in the achievements attained through the drought cycle management and disaster risk reduction model. What we have done so far with the communities is not adequate. The DCM approach is workable, it's working in the field. The fact that the partners themselves participated in the writing of the drought cycle management toolkit and they have got the opportunities to apply the same in the field, it's been a very fulfilling experience for us, both with the partners and the community. In great lengths, the Kenya Drought Cycle Management Program has reduced communities' vulnerability to drought, but still there is more to be done. Our strategy is continuous fundraising also to be able to do and accommodate more of these requests. We appreciate the funds that has been available so far and ECHO have also gone to great lengths in supporting our regional drought preparedness program both in Kenya and in Ethiopia. And currently we are also discussing more funding opportunities in the same area and for drought management initiatives in a greater Horn of Africa. Cordaid is a learning organization. Lessons learned from implementing the Kenya Drought Cycle Management Program are bound to shape her future.